Okay, guys, to finish up, um, as I was saying, so the thing about what's included in the public domain, you need to know that government works and documents, things that are created as a work duty or as a work for hire, um, those things are included in the public domain when it comes to government publications. Um, if any person creates something and uploads it to the, to the public domain, um, the creator themselves, if they publish something as anonymous, then that's considered in the public domain because there's no one person that you can attach to the copyright law. And then works that have been entered into the public domain because the copyrights have expired. Um, and so this is when I was referencing those works like Red Little Red Riding Hood and, you know, all of these very old stories and pieces of literature that we've seen redone a thousand times. Copyright laws do not protect the work forever. So um, a copyright lasts 70 years after the original author's lifetime. So the entire lifetime of that author plus 70 years after that. So usually it's the author and their children. Okay. Um, if it's a corporate work or a work for hire, then it's 95 years from the publication date or 120 years from the creation date, whichever expires first. Works in the public domain. So all works published in the U.S. before 1923 are in the public domain. Um, all works published with a copyright notice from 1923 through 1963 without a copyright renewal are also considered in the public domain. And any work published without a copyright notice from 1923 through 1977 are considered in the public domain. For works created after January 1st, 1978, copyrights are no longer renewable. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about public domain works, you can find that information at these links um, that you click on, or you can Google them, of course. And um, the, some of the information that I based this presentation off of is from teachingcopyright.org um, with a handout located there. Finally, there are certain things that cannot be protected by copyrights. Now, this is important to know because, as I stated, there are copyrights, trademarks, and patents. So the names of products and services are not copyrightable. Um, that would be more like a trademark. Names of businesses, organizations, groups, again, that would be a trademark. Pseudonyms. Um, pseudonyms cannot be copyrightable. So if you were to publish under a different name than is your own legal name, that would be a pseudonym. And a pseudonym you cannot copyright. Um, titles of works. Um, and this is interesting, but this is actually not copyrightable. If you wanted to protect the title of your work and make sure that nobody else could use that title, you would have to use a trademark. Um, catch words, mottos, slogans, all of those things are trademarks. And then listing of ingredients. This is, I thought this was interesting. In recipes, the listing of ingredients uh, that you would find on recipes, labels, formulas, those things are not copyrightable. Um, and it's because when you're cooking, there are so many different ingredients that are going to be similar, right? So if you're looking up a, uh, a recipe for, for pot roast, for instance, all those ingredients are pretty much going to be the same, give or take. Um, and so you can't copyright the list of ingredients. So in a recipe, the thing that's copyrightable is actually the, the, the directions and how the directions are written. That's the thing that's copyrightable. And that is the end. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you learned something new and actually learn the value of your own writing that you too can copyright whatever it is that you write and your value, your, um, excuse me, your ideas actually have real value. It's important to remember and it's good to know. All right. I'll see you next week.